Got it. You saw my uh, email earlier today. Um, you you will uh, this reference will um, come back to your mind real quick. Temptation a lot of times is portrayed um, as an angel sitting on one shoulder and the devil sitting on the other. Uh, my my favorite exposure to this was as a kid watching it on the Flintstones with Kazoo and somebody else. <laughs> But, but it, it's, it's a common literary uh, theme and a co common uh, cinema theme. Um, good angel, bad angel, whatever it is. And there's one angel trying to get us to think of others and delay immediate gratification, do the right thing. And then there's another angel on the other side saying, oh, just go for it, just go for it. And trying to go get you to pursue your own desires and get what you want right now. And of course, who wins depends on who we choose to listen to uh, in that moment. The reason I bring that up is because in, a, in Proverbs chapter 1, verses 8 through 33, Solomon, in a lot of ways, places the angel of, of wisdom on one shoulder and the devil of foolishness on another. And he kind of, for, for a short period of time, lets both of them call to us. But what Solomon does is that's different as he shows the end result of what happens if you listen to this voice and what happens if you listen to the other voice. And of course, if you can see the outcome, it, it certainly helps you make a wise choice. I think we'll find wisdom to be very practical tonight. And um, I think uh, we might be in for a surprise, uh, depending on, on uh, how many layers we can pull back, especially in this first paragraph. Um, I'd like to ask if someone would read for us from uh, Proverbs chapter one, verses eight through 19. We'll, uh, we'll take this in two parts tonight, but uh, verses uh, eight through 19 first. Would somebody read that for us, please? Richard, thank you, go ahead. Eight through 19. <laughs> Hear my son, your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Indeed, they are a graceful wreath to your head and ornaments about your neck. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie and wait for blood. Let us ambush the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them alive like Sheol, even whole as those who go down to the pit. We shall find all kinds of precious wealth. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Throw in your lot with us. We shall have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your feet from their path. For their feet run to evil, and they hasten to shed blood. Indeed, it is useless to spread the net in the eyes of any bird. But they lie in wait for their own blood. They ambush their own lives. So are the ways of everyone who gains by violence. It takes away the life of its possessors. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Um... I want to mention a couple of things just as background in verses eight and nine, then I'm, then I'm going to have a, a question um, to kind of get discussion started when we get to a verse 11. Um, the proverb writer says in verse seven, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But lesson number one in this developing discernment is how to listen and to whom. So in verse eight, we've got uh, my son and we're talking about a father's instruction and a mother's teaching. So you've got both the mother and the father involved in this instruction. I would call this a Deuteronomy six, four through nine kind of house. This is a place where instructions going on uh, around the clock where, there, where there's constant being poured into, and the, um, the, both the brother and the father are involved not only in the teaching and in the pleading. So the, they tell them part of the end result of if you listen, uh, one of the reasons you need to listen, uh, verse nine, there's a garland, so we've got a victor's wreath, and we've got a pendant, which was kind of like a gold medal. So this wisdom that we're trying to pour into you, this wisdom that God's trying to pour into you, 
is is something that that will bring you victory. This is something that will bring you accomplishment. Now, there's also a nuance here of the importance for us uh, of making God's word beautiful to others by the way that we live our lives. In other words, through his wisdom, God is, is offering to bestow his glory on us so that he may be glorified in that and through that. So he's telling us so much about, please take this on, accept the things that I'm going to be uh, giving you. And then um, one more thing about verse 10, and then we're, we're going to get to the specifics of why that matters. Um, the word sin, sinners or sinful men in verse 10, um, in the original mm -hmm. language, he's not talking about all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God type stuff. He's talking about habitual sin. He's talking about a chronic uh, sinner. Um, this is anyone who makes it easy to d disobey God. So, so the writer uh, Solomon says in verse 10, if sinful men entice you, do not give in to them. That's his headline. Now, now let's get into the nitty gritty. Starting in verse 11, He's, he describes a specific instance. Now, I want you to think about this and, and tell me what, what do you think the writer is describing in verses 11 through 14? What do you think? Go ahead, David. Well, just this is, this is about basically highway robbery kind of stuff mm -hmm. in those days where you just take people's lives, you take their goods, you're totally wanton disregard for uh, human life and, and, and decency. Okay, exactly. All right. This is, um, there, this is, um, it's worse than shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Um, there, there, there's no conscience to these people. Um, there, there's no heart. There's, there's, this is just wrong as wrong as wrong as wrong can can be. Um, now, the interesting thing about this is everybody that would be reading this originally and tonight, for that matter, we all read eleven through fourteen and I say, yeah, yeah, we agree with that. It's hard to disagree with that. It's it's hard to be against murder, looting, and mayhem. Um, but here's my question for you. It seems like after the writer goes through so much trouble to say, listen, please listen, please listen, please pay attention. Don't join a gang. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. <laughs> Is that all you got? Um, it's like you, you've, you've been poured into and you've, you've been pleaded with, and then you're basically told don't don't cast your lot with a gang. Um, how many of you have had someone say to you in your life, "Hey, come with me. Let's lie and lie and wait for someone's blood." Has anybody ever approached you and invited you to that? No. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> thank goodness. I, I was a little yeah. scared, but you know. <laughs> um, but but thankfully, no. Um, Here's my point. It is strange to begin a book of teaching uh, like this by warning against a way, uh, warning against a way of life that very few people are going to find tempting. It, it, it's like um, someone who's never tempted by by sugar telling them not to worry, don't be tempted by sugar. It's not a temptation to them. Why are you telling them that? Something else might be, but in this case, um, there's got to be something deeper going on. So we're going to kind of kind of dig into that a little bit. Um, take uh, verse 11 and verse 14 for just a minute and um, pretend like verses 12 and 13 are, are kind of blacked out for just a moment. And, and see if you can tell me why it's impossible for verse 11 and verse 14 to coexist. If they say, come along with us, let's lie and wait for innocent blood, let's ambush some harmless soul, 
Verse 14 casts lots with us. We'll all share the purse or we'll all share the loot. Why doesn't this work, David? There is no honor among thieves. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and that's a that's a critical mass point uh, for us to understand is that what what you think you're doing here, um, you think you're getting in with it and they'll take care of no, 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 no. That's that's not the deal. That's not what really is. So just because they say we'll share the we'll share the purse, um, no, probably not going to happen. Okay. Um, one of the writers I came across this week uh, spiritualized that and, and made a good point that um, whenever a group gathers around a grievance other than Jesus, it's probably going to have layers of counterfeit community to it. And mm -hmm. I, I thought that was a pretty loaded statement. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, but just something to uh, consider. Um, I'll, I got something here on the screen I want to uh, show you. What you're, uh, what you're looking at is a uh, bird's nest. Mm -hmm. um, if a bird sees the trap, mm -hmm. obviously the bird knows to stay away. The problem is birds usually don't see the trap. Mm -hmm. Um, so you scatter some seed down here along the net. Birds don't know the difference between food and bait. Um, the birds get caught. The birds get caught unaware. And of course, getting caught unaware is what happens to, in this specific context up through verse 18, is what happens to these violent men. You think you're so smart. You think, you think you're fooling people. You're the one getting fooled. Um, if you had have been paying better attention, you'd have seen that you were falling into a trap. So the violence comes back on them. So you've got that idea in verse 17 and verse 18, which brings us to verse 19, which says this, such are the paths of all who go after ill-gotten gain. It takes away the life of those who get it. I want to show you some varying translations of this verse. I'm going to come right back to you, Mary. Okay. All right. Let me get this to come up. All right. All right. Here's some varying translations of uh, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 19. Such is the fate of all who are not violent but greedy for money, it robs them of life. New Living Translation. Message Translation. When you grab all you can get, that's what happens. The more you get, the less you are. New Revised Standard uh, Version, um, which is a, a highly, mm -hmm. it's, it's more of a literal translation than a dynamic equivalent translation. Such is the end of all who are greedy for gain, it takes away the life of its possessors. Now, um, here's the um, here's the deal with this. Violence is not the real issue that Solomon's writing about. The issue is of uh, comes to us in verse 19. There's more of an issue of greed. There's more of an issue of a desire that has gone too far. And when it went too far, it resulted in the specific context of violence. But this, this greed can manifest itself in all the things that the proverb writer is going to talk about from this point through Proverbs chapter 10. It results sometimes in adultery. It results sometimes in thievery. It results in all sorts of different things, but he's he's really going after greed. Now, now, what's happening is from a literary standpoint, Solomon has baited, set, and caught his reader in a trap. Because we're all agreeing when we think this is about violence. Yeah, yeah, I'll agree with that. Yeah, I'll agree with that. But then we find out it's about our desire, and then it's like, whoa. Slow down here. This might be a little more personal than I thought. 
So um, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's brilliant. Of course, it's Solomon, but um, he's he's baited, hooked, and set the trap, and it's a trap that's easy to fall into. Mary, I cut you off a minute ago. What did you want to say? Well, you know, when I got to um, verse 18, I thought about Haman in the book of Esther. He, 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 was, he was determined to destroy the Jews. And uh, and but, um, what, that's his cousin, I'm trying to remember her cousin's name. Um, yeah, Mordecai. Mordecai, okay. And she, she was, he was setting up, um, you know, having him home. And then in the end, the very what he's very trap he set for Mordecai, he ended up getting the um, getting that because yeah. they were saying that they're lying wait for their own blood. So this is basically this is what Haman did. Haman became hanged man. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> but but I, that's very that's a very good um, uh, illustration straight out of text of what the proverb writer is talking about here. And and if you look at hey if you think about the story, the, the text in Esther, and you think about Haman, ultimately his problem was greed and desire. He, he wanted to be large and in charge um, above everything else. All right, um, any other thoughts or comments uh, on verses eight through 19? Anything else grab your attention? <laughs> Jeannie, are you talking to me? You're muted. All right. Go ahead. It, it darts out to me that um, verse 11 talks about setting an ambush and doing it for fun, um, which, um, I don't know, makes me think of gang activity. Sure. Um, but then verse 18 says the the ambush is not for, for the innocent. It is, it is for yourselves. And it made me think of um, the the quote, and I was trying to find it here, but it was about um, uh, if, if you're seeking, seeking uh, vengeance, um, let's see, what is it? Something like um, vengeance is a poison that you end up drinking yourself. Yeah. Yeah, and what you, what you set up came back on you. Spot on, Jeannie. Uh, Larry, go ahead, brother. You're muted too. Still muted, brother. I'm sure what you're saying is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's pick up verses uh, 20 through 33. Uh, could I have somebody read for us? Uh, Jack, go ahead, brother. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Out of out of the out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. She raises her voice in the public square. On top of the wall, she cries out. At the city gate, she makes her speech. How long will you who are simple love your simple ways? How long will mockers delight in mockery? and fools hate knowledge. Repent at my rebuke, then I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make known to you my teachings. But since you refuse to listen when I call, and no one pays attention when I stretch out my hand, since you disregard all my advice and do not accept my rebuke, I will turn, I in turn will laugh when disaster strikes you. I will mock when calamity overtakes you. When calamity overtakes you like a storm, when disaster sweeps over you like a whirlwind, when distress and trouble overwhelm you, then they will call to me, but I will not answer. They will look for me, but they will not find me. Since they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord, since they would not accept my advice and spurned my rebuke, they will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes. For the waywardness of the simple will kill them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. 
Amen. Thank you, Jack. All right, so we've got the uh, we've got a literary device here of personification that's going to uh, appear multiple times in the Book of Proverbs. Uh, here, the wisdom takes on the voice of a very gracious, regal woman. Uh, later in Proverbs, folly is also going to take on the voice of a not so regal woman. So let me ask you this: um, when we read in verse twenty. And verse 21, out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. And then we've got this personification. She raises her voice in the public square on top of the wall. She cries out. And then at the end of verse 21, at the city gate, she makes her speech. Um, what would be unique about a woman calling aloud in this way, in this culture? What would be unique about that? Go ahead, David. Women did not speak at the, at the city gate. That was not only men, that was the elder men. Okay, for sure. So in this, in this context, um, a woman would certainly not be speaking at the city gate in the, in the area of the elders. Um, she wouldn't be calling out uh, in uh, such a way. Um, so... This is almost like seeing something so out of the ordinary that you gravitate to it. Um, the, this, and, but, but here's the deal. Wisdom is butting up against and trying to penetrate through a culture where it's not readily accepted, where it won't readily be listened to. A woman goes to the city gates in those days. It's get out of here. <laughs> All right. So in a lot of ways, that's what happens to the, the wisdom that God is trying to bring into our hearts, into our lives. It's trying to penetrate into a culture that's by its very nature is trying to resist it and repulse it and, and, to, and to dispose uh, of it. But no one can say that this wisdom is inaccessible because even, even though she has called aloud, she has been in these locations and she has cried out. Uh, so she has made her voice known. Um, so it's one of those things where you're button up, it's like you're button heads, but you, you can't excuse yourself saying, well, I never heard it. Well, it was right there. You just chose not to pay attention. And because it was right there and you chose not to pay attention, um, there could be uh, some consequences. Uh, this wisdom needs to be heard above the noise, um, which brings me to a question I want to ask you. Um, what noises in our world tend to drown out God's wisdom? <laughs> I know softball, but, but humor me. It's time you have, Mike. Yeah, I hear you, man. <laughs> say the rumblings of our own stomach whoa rumblings of our own stomach that's stealable and preachable is <laughs> <laughs> the best form of flattery <laughs> <laughs> the rumblings are that that's wow that's so true that's so true because that's not an outside when that's an internal one that's just pushing up against and and resisting and could be the worst of all. Um, but wisdom is calling out to be heard above all of that. Now, there's a lot of gloom and there's a lot of doom between verse 22 and the end of the chapter. Um, just remember that warnings and rebukes and reproofs and even threats uh, of destruction are signs can be signs of grace when they're when they're being presented in such a way to help you not go somewhere and that's what's happening here um pleading with such strength not to follow down a wrong path because of what uh can happen um verse 22 
we've we've got um, three type of people we are introduced to that are going to make their presence known a good bit in Proverbs. There are the simple, okay? The simple are the naive and the gullible. Uh, they believe anything. They examine nothing. Um, they don't really know what they're living for. They haven't yet gotten to the point of foolishness. They're too naive, okay? They're not. They're they're headed down a wrong path, but they're not there yet. That's the simple. Uh, you've got the foolish, who are just dull and stubborn, um, always know better, always have an excuse. Um, and when something happens, they're always the victim. It, it's never their fault. Um, they've moved further away from God than the simple. They haven't gone as far as the mockers who are not only ignoring the wisdom, but they're scorning the wisdom. So uh, all three of these, the simple, the fools, and the mockers, uh, we're going to see um, from time to time as we go through uh, uh, Proverbs. Now, there was, there was a couple of the questions I wanted to ask you about this text and, and then just get your overall thoughts. Um, when I get down to verse uh, 26, the uh, writer says, speaking um, as wisdom, lady wisdom, saying, I in turn will laugh when disaster strikes you. I will mock when calamity overtakes you. When a calamity overtakes you like a storm, they'll call to me, verse 28, but I'm not answering. They'll look, but they won't find me. Since they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord, wouldn't accept my words, they'll eat the fruit of their ways, be filled with the fruit of their schemes. Oh, well. There's a layer of this for wisdom just to laugh at people. That, that almost sounds cruel. My question to you is, why would wisdom laugh at people? Is it cruel? Is it not cruel? And what's going on? All right, let me go Chip and David. Isn't it that when, when you do something that you realize was dumb or stupid or not thought through, that you realize you should have known better, that you knew better, you just didn't act on it. And in this way, the wisdom is mocking you by reminding you that you really do know better than this. I cer certainly think that's that can be a part of it for sure. It's like it's like that like that voice you've heard in your head. It, it, for me, it's my mom's voice. It's like, didn't I tell you? <laughs> uh, David, what were you going to say? Thank you, Chip. Yeah, I think part of this is also the, the person who says they're sorry because they're sorry they got caught. Um, the person who's not really repentant and doesn't really, oh, God, you know, I'm really sorry, you know, please help me, right? As opposed to, you know, the person who doesn't really care and, and now, so now wisdom or God is, is not going to really. Okay. Because I think generally you look at the broader Bible, if you go to God, God will come, you know, God will meet you more than halfway. And I don't think that's what this is saying. I think this is saying that, yeah, if, if you're just saying you're sorry you got caught, nah, that doesn't cut it. All right. Uh, I'm with you, and I especially appreciate you bringing into the conversation the importance of looking at something in the context of all of Scripture. Uh, that, that reveals character, because I think that's an important part of this to help us uh, pick our way through a little bit, uh, because um, we know and have experienced that um, when we mess up and we know better and we humble ourselves, God comes running. Um, we, we've experienced that. We have received that uh, with, with great gratitude. Now, with all that being said, there is an element, especially when you're talking about wisdom, that wisdom is wisdom. And wisdom helps us avoid trouble. But when we avoid the wisdom, sometimes trouble happens. And sometimes there is pain after we've gotten into trouble of reaping what we sow. From a human point of view, 
even, even if God has reached down in his tender mercy and spared us and forgiven us, there will there can be times when there are earthly consequences that must be must be dealt with. Mm -hmm. um, I'll um I'll give you an unrelated example. Um, I have not uh, done recovery ministry a fraction of what uh, Rita has. I've uh, uh, had a little bit of, of experience and um, hadn't had an experience four or five years ago with, uh, with someone who had, um, had struggled, been, been caught in this disease for years and years and um, repented and not only re repented, but just uh, through a lot of, of prayer and dependence on God, instead of depending on substances, spent the last two or three years of his life clean. Um, he still died at age 32 of a dis destroyed mm -hmm. liver because what he had done between the ages of 12 and 30. Now, he's been forgiven by God. He gets to spend eternity with Jesus and praise God for that. But, but there, were, there was a, a human um, consequence because wisdom is wisdom. Mm -hmm. And there, there are results uh, of activity that uh, we soberly have to face. Um, what are some ways that wisdom speaks today? Mm -hmm. Through God's word. Always through God's word, ultimately through God's word. And, and thankfully it is preserved for us, okay? I have a question, Mike, is, is the wisdom that we read about in Proverbs, does that just equate to God? Not always, and I'm very grateful that you pointed that out because the wisdom here is the wisdom of God, but isn't necessarily God himself. I struggle with that too. <laughs> uh, David, go ahead. Yeah, I think that's a very good point because I think because Solomon was so wise, some people get confused and they're thinking that this is the wisdom of Solomon. It's not that either. Okay. Um, I think you put it right, Mike. It's it's the wisdom of God, which is not the sum total of God, it's a part of God, right? I think so. And it, it is a force uh, which carries some cause and effect consequences. But uh, I would not, I would say the wisdom comes from God, but not necessarily the wisdom is God. Uh, Dan, go ahead. I think what we're looking at here is what would be considered normal available wisdom. I mean, it's crying out in the street, it's in the public places. Uh, it's been available to these fools. Uh, they had every opportunity to gain wisdom, chose not to, ended up in calamity and wisdom scorned them because wisdom was there and they wouldn't take it. Amen. Spot on, brother. Spot on. Thank you. Uh, Jeannie, That's, go ahead. That sounds very third person to me. And, and I feel myself in the group that does dumb things. Um, <laughs> yeah, me too. I, I guess it scared me. You know, verse 22. How long, simpletons, will you insist on being simple-minded? At least that's the NLT version. Um, God is entirely just in, in saying that to us, all of us. Sure. But I want to, it, um, I guess I want to think of his goodness and his love and his patience along with that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, go ahead. I don't think we're looking at an issue where the people were 
making a mistake, doing a dumb thing. This was a way of life. This was a consistent pattern in their life. The simple, the mockers, the fools were acting in a way consistently uh, that veered from the wisdom of God or the wisdom available in the world. I mean, we can certainly make mistakes, certainly make foolish decisions. I do. I know everybody else does. Uh, but it's not a pattern of our life. Here, I think what is being pointed out is these people lived that pattern. And therefore, wisdom mocked them. Okay. All right. Good. Good. That was kind of a day in, day out life. Okay. All right, Larry. Good. David, go ahead. And I'm going yeah. to get a Richard after you, David. A little bit on uh, verse 24. Um, I want to read it from the literal. Because I have called and you refused, I stretched out my hand and my name, my and none is attending. Um, I believe that's the verse that Michelangelo tries to capture in the Sistine Chapel. If you've ever, if you can put that image in your head, God is straining to get his hand out to, to the man, presumably Adam. And Adam's kind of going, yeah, maybe, I don't know, you know. <laughs> yeah. And unfortunately, I think that captures the human condition all too well. Great point, David. Great point. Richard. <clears throat> that may not be along the same lines here, but when I look at lot tw at lot at verse 22, I, I just see on top of greed, I just see all the flaws of human nature, our jealousies, our desires, our wants. You know, it, it, I, I don't think this is made out to be um, real uh, earth shattering. It's really, I think, very obvious that we all are from a sinful nature. And that sinful nature takes place in each one of us in different ways. There, there are different things that appeal to our sinful nature. And, um, you know, I think it's a good recap of all of that at one time. I, I don't know if I'm saying, making myself clear, but it's kind of what I see. I think you, I think you just answered the last question I was gonna ask tonight which is what makes it difficult to follow the voice of wisdom, even when we know it's the right voice, even when we know it's the right thing to do, still choosing not to, not to listen and not to follow. There, there, is, a, there is a part of our nature that, that, that uh, we're still in progress trying to surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, trying to give him, trying to turn over more and more of ourself to him. Uh, Dan, what were you gonna say? Well, I think the picture I'm getting here is they didn't ignore some advice. They didn't ignore part of his advice. They ignored all of wisdom's advice. Uh, and I think that separates people who are attempting to do the right thing from people who are totally ignoring any wisdom. And that's what I see here. Okay. It's, they ignored all my advice. Okay, all right, I see that. All right, David. Yeah, and actually I listened to Jeannie and I listened to Dan and I listened to Richard and I think it's all of the above, okay? Um, I think clearly what is being depicted here, and these people do exist, they existed then, they exist today, they're people who are just adamantly evil, okay? Um, but there's pieces of this in all of us, okay? Um, hopefully, and I don't think anybody here on this thing is, is going to go out and, you know, do highway robbery and kill somebody tonight, okay? I kind of find that hard to believe. Um, but we all have our jealousies and our, our greeds and our, you know, our selfishness, so. Um, I, the, the modern day message to us it, on this call and to Christians is see some of this in yourself because it's there. 
choose and and choose wisdom. Yes, yes, yes. We are going to move into chapter two next week. It's going to start the same way we started tonight. My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands, it, it starts off the same, but um, I mentioned to David before, before we had several people on tonight, that week one was kind of 30,000 feet. Tonight was 20,000 feet. Next week will kind of be 10,000 feet view. Eventually, we're going to be ground level. But, uh, but the, uh, the funnel is kind of narrowing uh, every week. And by the time we get to chapters 9 and 10, we're into the couplets, and every single verse is its own, its own sermon almost. Um, so that's where we're going. Uh, thank you for everybody who jumped in and shared tonight. This is, um, uh, I'm always blessed to hear from, from different thoughts and different perspectives. It, it really blessed me to, to, uh, to hear from so many of you tonight. I, I hope the rest of you were blessed by hearing from each other too. Um, so for next week, we'll, uh, we'll cover chapter two. Uh, like I mentioned last week, we'll, we'll move through Proverbs textually until we get seven or eight chapters in, and then we'll go more topically uh, after that. All right. Um, I need someone to lead us in prayer. Uh, Jim Harkness, can uh, uh, would you be willing to lead us tonight, please, sir? I can. Heavenly Father, we uh, we stop just to recognize who you are and uh, what you are. You are our Lord, our Father, uh, but you also care for us as your children and you hold us tight uh, in your bosom and in your hands. Father, there are so many that are struggling, not just with uh, health issues that we've talked about before, but uh, just the the thinking process that we're, we're talking about tonight, just uh, the direction of life and how do we handle um, our own focus and what it should be and that Lord should always be on you. Help us to get out of ourselves, to, to put away uh, the foolish thoughts and the, the things that take us away from your will and from, from your desire and make, the, make the, the decision in our mind so strong that uh, it overrules uh, those other things that we want to be yours and to do your will. Father, help us to be ambassadors to anyone we come in contact with. Help us to have the words that we've talked about, have the words that uh, you've put in our heart that we can share with others how you love everyone and uh, no one is beyond your grasp. And we thank you for the love that you have uh, for each one of us and everyone and for the mercy that you uh, bestow upon everyone as well. Father, as we go through the rest of this week, uh, we pray that we shine a light where we can and we uh, stand boldly for you and for your word. And uh, Father, when we do fail, we pray for forgiveness. And in everything, we just want to bring honor to your name. We bring the, uh, the names of those mentioned before to you again. Father, so many that are on our minds and on our hearts, uh, from a health perspective and from a spiritual uh, health perspective as well, Father. We just pray that you bless them and heal them. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.